quick workshop tour. Part two of the Pelican case build I did. I'm just gonna voice over most of this one. This video is gonna focus more on the actual PC components and if you were to build this yourself as an average user. I'm gonna try and capture this, I don't know if I can, but one of the reasons I absolutely love Fantax, um, they think like I think, and you gotta think of everything. So right here, there's a screw you'd have to put in, but there's a metal plate here. So they've actually thought ahead and one, there's no metal up here. And two, there was actually already a space here, and my hinge clears it too. So this is really cool, just simple design. You have to pass through the screwdriver that way. If they didn't put that little hole in the metal, right there, you know, how would anyone screw that in? That would be a nightmare. You'd have, you need a screwdriver that was one inch long. And I've lost my damn screw in there, but that's not the point. Um, Fantex, like myself, you know, attention to detail. Uh, I really like that. Okay, so back into the build, um, right now I have the hinges off, the pneumatic hinges. I just popped off their ball joints so that way you can work on the underside of the computer. Uh, I suspect that this was actually easier to work on than a standalone Fantex Evolve shift, uh, because the shift is just this tower, you know, just stands on its own, and this way I had this case to kind of lay it flat flip it around. Uh, here I'm installing the M.2. Sadly, we didn't get as much drive space as we wanted. Um, I'll show in the Fantex where they expect you to put the drives and it's pretty ridiculous. I don't think they would normally fit there without stretching the cable. But uh, you can kind of see it right there. The two drive bays for the two and a half inch are so darn close to that cable that it bends it. Um, I will say Fantex included a really good cable, helped me, and like I said, the chassis is strong, also very essential. Uh, and you've got, uh, you know, four standard ITX screws, four screws alone will hold that thing in fine. And now you can kind of see, like, the cable is so bent against those, those little trays. It would only become much worse if you put SSDs or two and a half inch drives in there. So I actually took them out all together because I know those cables, once you really crease them hard, it can cause damage. Hey, we got an abundance of cable from things like the power cable and all the USB stuff is gonna add up. Fantex does include this little middle section with a little trap door. But I gotta say, it, it's really not big enough uh, for a full, what I would consider, cable shroud. Because uh, in a little case like this, you actually wind up with so much extra cable. And um, it could barely fit anything. And then once you start filling it with cables, nothing can move in there. You can't pass stuff through. So A for effort, but uh, C for execution, I guess. Because you really, it fills up super quick that little cubby and uh it, it doesn't even fully cover it but i guess it's better than nothing uh, especially at this case size so this is becoming like a case review i guess of the the uh, fantex case i used as my skeleton because i guess last case we really or last video we really went over the uh the modifications i did now you can kind of see how it was just to build in it, because ideally I'd like to be able to ship these for people who want to build their own, um, but I'll just ship the Pelican case with the Fandex case already installed, already on hinges, and they can do their own PC build like you normally would. And you gotta do all the uh, 
measuring and planning and building of the shockproof element. So you can see I relocated one of the drives to the back, made a lot more sense. Uh, it doesn't hit the plastic or anything on the back, so that was a safer place for it. There we've got our little magnetic USB expansion that gives extra expansion and power for full powered USB. In the back we've got the cable actually, um, or uh, sorry, we've got the ribbon actually flipped around which made it a little difficult to maneuver the thing when I had to slide it to get the back plate back on here. But having the ribbon flipped around meant the fans could breathe bottom up, which with the case popped up, actually gives them better air. Normally the GPU in this case would be flipped with the PCB to, to the wall, but we're reversing that. Let's see, we got our AIO. Um, a lot of people have also opted for this particular AIO for this case because you can get the double thick rad in a 120 size. Pretty much makes it almost as good as a 240. Uh, our temperatures were great. We were looking at, I think, I think under load we didn't even hit 50. Uh, that was without a, an overclock, but still plenty of room for him to play. I put an X for Pelican X. Thought that was appropriate. I just like to put little shapes. They mash out the same anyway. Non-conductive. Probably use Thermal Grizzly or something on this. And let's see. Now we're going to flip again to put in the graphics card. Okay, sorry. Still working on the AIO. Those tubes are really stiff. And that's a good thing. They don't they don't crease easily. I could be somewhat forceful to get the tubes to bend where I want without them creasing. Uh, you can see it kind of takes a weird route just so that the tubes don't poke out and we kind of give them a nice long run. And then I think uh, graphics card clears the tubes just fine there. Pretty much just has like, you know, a half inch of space between touching anything. So if it shakes around a little, that's okay. It's not going to bonk the power supply or the radiator. Getting that in the sweet spot, you know, helped right in the middle there. Like I said, it's flipped around from the way the case would normally be. That's so you can just take advantage of the fact that there's no panels. And yeah, there's um, foam on the bottom, but the card's raised a few inches from that, so should get plenty of air from the open chassis. Actually, quick report. Um, the owner, after using it for about a month and being happy, uh, reported that on the lockout, if he's able to flip it to the other side, he can actually get the case an additional inch up in the air um, than where I had it propped, and that gives him even better GPU temps. It doesn't... Uh, it's a pretty hot card. It was going to 80, but that's Pascal, and I, I think he's able to keep it under that by just jacking the, the case up a teeny bit more with that lockout I made. So that was a cool little improvement. Like, you know, this is a learning experience. This is the first of that I've ever built. From here on out, they're gonna they're gonna go a lot smoother, uh, be a more efficient build process. I played with Innie and Audi on this fan, and I found it almost made no difference, so I think I just went Audi, because, uh, the other one's in Innie. You hear popping back on the hinges. Okay, first booth, let's see. Uh, power cable reaches, no problem. baby on. Oh, it's got Rasta colors. That's kind of cool. I didn't know it was going to do that. Rastafari. We're going to, since we're actually running it, let's be safe and use the lockout. There we go. That should stop it. Cool. Monitor, let's plug a monitor in, how about that? 
All right, boot it up, baby. Mouse and keyboard, too, we'll throw in there. Oh, what's wrong with my camera? There we go. So mouse and keys. Well, it works. <laughs> there she is. Booted. So it's gonna go right in. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna set up Windows, and then I'll uh, put this sucker through some tests. Oh, there it is, Pelican X. That's my name for it right now. Okay, let's load up Windows. So this isn't uh, this isn't fully loaded yet. I have it on hinge, so I can show underside, but this is a <laughs> chassis floating within Pelican case. And uh, it's hung pretty simply on pneumatic hinges and swinging hinges. And let's do like a little walkthrough. So, um, underside of the chassis, pretty much what you would see on um, the normal version of the Evolve, except I flipped around the graphics card, which this case does allow for, because it's going to be running like this and getting plenty of fresh air. Uh, there's no longer any panels on the case, be it the aluminum panels or the glass ones. Uh, what else can I show you on the bottom before we flip it into action? Got future fan and uh, SATA, anything you might need Bolex for, lighting, whatever. That's all ready to go. Uh, Cut out this foam, custom fit, little extra bumper right there where it might make contact. That's pretty much all to see on the bottom. Put the uh, Audi into an Innie, given the panel situation. To work on it, you just have to undo these clasps right here. I don't know if they're clasps, they're more, uh, what are they? They're uh, ball joints. There we go joint hinge and the PC will sit like that floating when you push it down it's nestled in there nicely and can be traveled with a um, few features antenna removable um, lots of USBs were requested and since I couldn't really deliver on drive space as much as I would have liked we did make up for it with USBs there's two extra 3.0s so row of uh, an extra four 2.0s, two, two, two more 2.0s there, and uh, extra power for any more. Big thank you to the client who gave me a nice two month period to design this, redesign this, build it correctly, test it, and uh, you know, took, took on the faith that uh, I've never built a PC for this guy before, but he heard my name on good rumor and uh so thank you to the client who allowed me to do this prototype for them oh and what a beautiful day i had to take some outdoor shots of this pc that just looks so good in nature so i want to at this point give a big shout out to pc part picker who again featured my work and i think is a, a great platform i'm happy to endorse Builds.gg also reposted it, I think, on Instagram. So shout out to Matt over there from Cable Mod. I want to do a cool project with him soon. I'm kind of reaching out to companies. And the real cool thing also is Pelican reposted this. Actual Pelican's Facebook reposted this case. So I've been in touch with them as far as getting me a small batch of cases that I can take affordably, take on that inventory and pass them on to you guys, whoever wants to order a build. I'm working on a new website right now that's strictly PC mod focus, where you can basically ask me for anything. Till then, just hit me up on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, anywhere you can find me, I'll respond in a day or two. My current website's really set up for my art gallery, furniture, and construction business, which I'm kind of shifting gears from. I'm just a guy doing this from home who really wants to shake up the PC world, make it completely custom, completely form and function and DIY, and here you go, a shockproof PC. Thank you everyone, like, sub, sh bleh, sub share. Yeah, you should sub share, that's a good one. Just sub share, subscribe, like, all the good things. It'll really help out my small channel. We're trickling in with subscribers and uh, you know, it's a creative underdog thing, but I put a, uh, you know, hand-built craftsmanship, I guess you could say, into these computers. So, thanks a lot for checking out Polytech. 
Peace out, PC people.